In this video, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. So check this out. I have this automation that lets me generate images, edit images, and generate video, plus adding captions later on. This can generate content for my social media platforms, right? Create AI generated content. The problem is I cannot change or update the image size dynamically. So I am using the flux dev model and currently it's locked into a specific aspect ratio. I'm going to be building in how we can set the aspect ratio in the automation to choose what you want that aspect ratio to be. For example, 16 by nine, that is the common, you know, long form YouTube video format or nine by 16, that's common for short form social media that fits on your phone. So in this video, I'm going to be updating my system and building that feature into the automation. Let's dive into it. All right, let's jump right into it. So what we're gonna be doing today is expanding out the Airtable base to be able to adjust the image aspect ratio dynamically, right? Now, if you're wondering what this automation even is, this is part of my seven day automation bootcamp. In the bootcamp, I show you exactly how to build this automation, this N8N workflow and this Airtable base. This is my master content management system that handles all of my social media content posting. I can post manual workflows right here on a schedule. I could drag and drop all of my content right into a media file slot, create a new post, drag it in my content and have that post to social media automatically. Okay, all of that stuff can be generated in this automation right here, then get sent on to be published to all of your social media platforms. All right. In this workflow right here, I currently have YouTube and Instagram just for this demo, and they are currently deactivated for this video. So we're going to be expanding this out and getting in dynamic aspect ratios to send to the image generation models. Now for the bootcamp, we're going to use the flux dev model. This is the one of the cheapest models to run for image generation, and it does a very good job at image generation. It's very fast, very cheap and works really well, especially for testing. But you can choose to use any image gen model in here. And down here, we're using Kling 1.6. Okay, again, you can swap out any model you want inside FAL and use whatever generation tools you like. But for now, we're gonna be using these two models. Just taking a look, giving you guys a sort of overview here. This is some of the work that gets output by FlexDev. It's pretty good. Here is that image that was turned into a video with the system. Not bad, that looks great. Again, I will show you step-by-step step how to build this entire thing from scratch if you join my seven-day automation bootcamp. I have the link in the description below. So now you kind of know what we're looking at. We're gonna be adding the image aspect ratio controls. So what do we need to do here? I'm gonna first add a new field right here in Airtable. I'll right click on this field, click on insert right. Let's make this a single select dropdown. Okay, I'll name this field, choose aspect ratio. And for the options here, I'm gonna set this first one to portrait. This will be nine by 16. Next option, we'll do landscape. This will be 16, nine, right? Just common aspect ratios. These are the aspect ratios you're gonna to wanna to be producing your videos in, no matter if you're doing manual, you know, real videos, images and videos, photos and videos, or if you're doing AI generated content, this is generally what you wanna shoot for. And the last one for Instagram, we can do the square orientation. Okay, you can do other orientations in here. It's all dependent on the model and what platform you're posting to, but generally these three are the common ones right here. So I'm gonna set those options in there. And you guys know me, I like to color code stuff. So I'm gonna color code all my selections here, just like that. Now I tend to color code this because at a glance I can see, I have a, a schema for my color coding, right? Anything that's sort of portrait or image related is blue. So you can see the image thing right here. Anything that's landscape or video related is this pink color. So it helps me at a glance just see everything, you know, everything that might be an image, everything that might be video related. I have that my own system and color coding, right? So what we can do now is assign 
an orientation, right? We have a new dropdown. We can assign these orientation to our new video or image or video productions. So we need to add a couple more fields in here. Okay, this is the one I want to see in my AI workflow view. Okay, I've created some other views in here. Views are just ways of organizing all of your data in a table. All of these views contain all the same data. I'm just hiding and showing the relevant fields depending on what workflow I wanna see. And get In this case, this is everything that's manual related. In this AI workflow right here, this is everything for AI generation. And in this view, I have everything for writing the captions, you know, generating the captions, adding hashtags and posting to my accounts. So in my AI workflow, this is the field I want to see and interact with, but I actually need two more fields in here for the automation to work. So I'm gonna come into my all data view. This is just a you know bird's eye view of everything in this table, all the fields, all the data, not particularly organized in any way, but you can see the new field I created is at the very end, all the way down my list at the very end of my fields in this table. Okay, so here I am, I'm gonna create two new fields here in my all data view. And this first one is going to be a formula field for this formula. Okay, we need to write a sort of complex formula here. In Airtable, you can create any formula that you want, just like in Google Sheets or something, writing out a formula to do calculations, things like that. So we're gonna create a formula similar to that, but we're gonna use Omni. Omni is pretty cool. It's Airtable's new AI agent built right in. So we can ask Omni anything and have Omni build stuff for us. So what I'm gonna do over here in my new field is have Omni create this formula. So I'm gonna click this button and just in plain English, say what I want done here. I want a couple things. This field must display data related to what selection is made in choose aspect ratio. Remember that's my other field I just made for those drop down selections. Now I'll just keep typing, what do I want done very simply. When portrait is selected, display 916. So I'm gonna spell this with the capital P, that's what I have it spelled like in the options over here. And I'm gonna put quotes around it, right? We just need to give Omni that little bit of context. So now I can be a little more loose with my other two things I need right here. So I'm gonna say, when, when landscape is selected, display 16.9 and display 1.1. You can leave a few typos in here. The agent is smart enough to read your context, meaning that is the biggest hack in doing this vibe sort of building kind of stuff. You can leave typos. The AI knows what you're talking about. You can type much faster if you don't try and go back and correct your spelling. So let's create that formula. Let's see what Omni builds here. Great, there it is. Pretty straightforward switch case right here. And it gave our field a title, aspect ratio value. I'm just gonna rename this aspect ratio. Cool, create the field. Now we can see what it does. When I make a selection, it's going to display that actual aspect ratio value in just the plain text, right? This is something we're gonna to use to automate this number right here. We have to pass on to the generation tools. So we need to do that same thing, create a new field. I'll just copy this field, I'll duplicate it. Now we have a duplicate field and we're gonna change in some values here. So in N8N, the models that we're using, we're using an API called fal.ai. Again, I show you everything step-by-step, step, very slowly. It's all designed for beginners. I walk you through this stuff very, very slowly and make it very simple to understand. But what we're doing here is we're using another free tool, fal.ai. And I'm gonna come into my home tab. I'll find the Flux dev model that I'm using right here. I'll come into the playground and I'll set some of these settings that I want. So drop this down for the image size. This is what we wanna change dynamically, right? We wanna change the actual orientation and the aspect ratio. So I'm gonna drop this down. You can see some of the other default aspect ratios you can load into Airtable if you want to. What I want to check is this one right here. All right, portrait 916. If I switch this now to the curl view, you can see that the image size, it's not the aspect ratio, it's this weird variable right here. It's this weird name. This is what the flux dev model actually needs for the orientation for the image size. It's gonna need this weird name, right? So we have to enter in this weird name as our value. So I'm gonna copy this right here 
portrait 16.9. That's how it's written. I'm gonna come back into Airtable. I'm gonna come into the new field here, double click to edit the field, and I'll change the display value. I'll change it to that weird variable right there, portrait 16.9. Okay, I'll do the same thing. I'll grab the other one. So if I switch this view right here, we'll come back to the regular easy to read form view. I'll click on more to drop down the settings and I'll choose the landscape, not that one, landscape 16.9 right there. Come into the form view, switch it to the curl. This is the actual parameters we're using in N8N to send off all that information. So this is what we need right here. Landscape 16.9, grab that, jump back into Airtable and paste that one right there. Cool, same thing for Square. I happen to know what all of these are, so I'm just going to finish off Square by typing it in. Pretty easy, that's just Square. Great, so I'll save that. Now we can see the different values here. These are very specific to specific models. So if you run into situations where your models that you're choosing that you wanna set up have weird variables, you'd have to create a new field for that specific model just so we can get that data to run down the N8N chain. Okay, so since both of these fields are automation fields and I don't actually need to see them, I'm gonna name them with a different name so that when I'm looking up these fields, I know that they're not sort of front facing, they're more back end facing fields, back end for the automation. So I'm gonna name this one aspect ratio, just like that. And I'll name this field model image size variable, something like that, something ridiculous. And so I'll remember what that one is. Cool, so since I added these two fields to my all data table, everything is exposed over here, everything is visible and not hidden. If I come back into my AI workflow, we won't see those two new fields. They're going to remain hidden. I can see them down here. My two new fields are hidden in my AI workflow view. They're there, we can use them in the automation, but I don't actually see them in my workflow. Great, so that sets us up here. Let's actually run a new test and get data moving down the chains. So I'm gonna create a new record. I'll name this aspect test, something like that. Aspect ratio, let's choose landscape. My other images over here, these were hard coded for portrait orientation. So if I test a landscape view, we'll know if that's actually working because it has changed, right? So I'm going to select my image preset. I'll mention again, guys, if this is overwhelming, you have no idea what I'm doing here. I teach you how to build this entire system step-by-step step in the seven-day automation bootcamp. You can check out the link below. Text input prompt. There we go. Let's dip back into the sci-fi fantasy stuff. So we're gonna do barren sci-fi landscape, devoid of plant life, rough desert. You get the idea here for the prompt. Now, ultimately you can, again, leave in typos. You can leave it super rough. We have an AI agent that is going to handle writing the actual prompt. We just need to give that agent some context. So right here, I'm gonna choose generate image. Get that image generated. Okay, first, since the automation is inactive, I'm gonna to need to come over here and test the workflow. So I'm gonna come into this node. I have some saved pinned data. I'm going to unpin it, get rid of that data. We can start fresh. Now, just to make sure nothing gets pushed down the chain too far, I'm gonna come in here and just break the route and get everything into this node right here. So let's come over here, test the workflow. I hit execute workflow to test this trigger and run the data down this generate image route. So I can select generate image. There we go. Jump back into N8N, watch this one come down and boom. This edit fields node is collecting all of the data from Airtable, right? It's getting everything from Airtable and passing it down the chains. So this is where I need to get my new information. I'll double click in here, scroll down and we can pass in the aspect ratio. There it is. I want to remove it from my data array. I can do that by simply naming it aspect ratio and the model image size variable. We'll set that there. Again, remove it from the array. I'll just rename it like that. Let's hit execute step. Awesome. Got my two new parameters coming down. I'll click outside of this node so I can reconnect it back up. There it is. And here is the image prompt agent. This will take the crude image prompt, what I wrote right here, and write a much better prompt. So it looks like everything is linked up. I can just hit execute step. 
There we go. So much better prompt. This is the full prompt that will get sent to the image generation model. In this case, again, we are using Flux Dev for testing. So everything should be connected up in here. I'll just test this node, run it down and pass it into Flux Dev. Come into Flux Dev and we can pass in the new variables, right? So here is where I had a hard coded variable that was testing some stuff earlier. So right here, I had that image size hard coded in. So we're gonna drag in the new dynamic variable right there. Now we can set that variable in Airtable and whatever we set it to in Airtable will get passed to the image generation model. Pretty awesome. So I'll click outside of this node, everything else should be connected up. So I'll just run down everything to the last node, hit the little play button to finish the test. This will wait 10 seconds, download that image, prepare it for Airtable and drop it back into Airtable. There we go. Let's check it out in Airtable. Boom, there it is. And let's check it out. Landscape orientation. That's what we're looking for. Pretty good and not bad for Flux Dev for landscape. That looks great. So that is it, guys. That is how you bring in dynamic image size to your content management system. I highly recommend diving into the bootcamp. It's only $10 to join and I'll show you how to build this entire thing. You can start having fun with it. So just to be clear, for those of you on YouTube watching this, I would have to go run down the chain and swap out the expression in here, but that's all we need to do. Flux would take in those variables and then Kling would use the aspect ratio of the image sent to Kling, right? If you're familiar with the image to video, video generation, we just need to send them that image and they generate the video, right? I'm set up, ready to go. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have fun setting up dynamic image orientation in Airtable. There it is, guys. Hope you found this video helpful. I highly recommend joining the seven day automation bootcamp. If you're an absolute beginner, it is a game changer. You can learn how to build this entire automation from scratch and create your first system. I've got the link in the description below. Guys, I look forward to seeing you in the bootcamp and I'll see you in the next video.